A wide area network, WAN, serves to interconnect two or more LANs. WAN technology is designed to extend network connectivity to much greater distances than any LAN technology is capable of. Most companies can't afford to build their own WAN, so it is usual to buy WAN service from a service provider. Service providers are in the business of building and selling WAN connectivity. They invest in the equipment, cabling, and training to build transcontinental networks for other businesses to rent. For the CCNA exam, you need to be familiar with four types of WAN connections and the protocols associated with them. There are four major WAN connection types, dedicated leased line connections, circuit switched connections, packet switched connections, and cell switched connections. A leased line refers to a connection that is installed and provisioned for the exclusive use of the customer. Essentially, when you order a leased line, you get your very own piece of wire from your location to the service provider's network. This is good because no other customer can affect your line, as can be the case with other WAN services. You have a lot of control over this circuit to do things such as quality of service and other traffic management. The downside is that a lease line is expensive and gets a lot more expensive if you need to connect to offices that are far apart. A lease line is typically a point-to-point -point connection from the head office to a branch office. So if you need to connect to multiple locations, you need multiple leased lines. Multiple leased lines get even more expensive. Leased line circuits typically run point-to-point -point protocol, PPP, high-level data link control protocol, HDLC, or possibly serial line internet protocol, SLIP. A circuit switched WAN uses the phone company as the service provider, either with analog dial-up or digital ISDN connections. With circuit switching, if you need to connect to the remote LAN, a call is dialed and a circuit is established. The data is sent across the circuit and the circuit is taken down when it is no longer needed. Circuit switched WANs usually use PPP, HDLC, or SLIP, and they tend to be really slow, anywhere from 19.2K for analog dial-up to 128K for ISDN using a basic rate interface. They can also get expensive because most contracts specify a pay-per-usage billing. Packet switched WAN service allows you to connect to the provider's network in much the same way as a PC connects to a hub. When connected, your traffic is affected by other customers and theirs by you. This can be an issue sometimes, but it can be managed. The advantage of this shared bandwidth technology is that with a single physical connection from your router's serial ports, typically, you can establish virtual connections to many other locations around the world. So if you have a lot of branch offices and they are far away from the head office, a packet switch solution is a good idea. Packet switched circuits usually use frame relay or possibly X25. Cell switching is similar to packet switching. The difference is that with packet switch networks, the size of the unit of data being sent, called frames, is variable. Cell switched units, cells, are of a constant size. This makes dealing with heavy traffic loads easier and more efficient. Cell switch solutions, such as ATM, asynchronous transfer mode, tend to be big, fast, and robust. There has been a boom recently in the deployment of wireless networks for both LAN and WAN applications. The IEEE 802.11 Wireless Fidelity Standard, affectionately known as Wi-Fi, specifies a growing set of standards for short-range, high-speed wireless systems that are good for everything from mobile device connectivity to home media center systems. The advantages are the elimination of cables and the freedom of movement. The disadvantages are in range, reliability, and security. Wireless is a good WAN choice for moderate distances, less than 10 miles, for example, with line of sight between them, for example, between buildings and a campus. Special antennas are used to make the wireless signal directional and increase the range, often to more than 20 kilometers.